Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Paycom Software Stock, ticker PAYC. This one came in by request down in the comment section of one of my other videos. If you have a request you'd like me to take a look at, just put it down in the comments. Um, I'll get the ticker on the whiteboard behind me here, and eventually I'll make a video. If it's a stock that's in the S&P 500 like Paycom is, I'll post those on YouTube for free. The rest I post over on Patreon um, at the $5 tier month level. You can request any stock you want for me to take a look at and I'll post it over there for you. And then um, I have a free tier on Patreon now as well. So um, it's good to join there because then you don't have to, I don't have to kind of rely on the uh, YouTube algorithm to kind of get my um, videos in front of you and you can kind of easily they have a search function there now that they've been working on, which is nice. You can kind of look through the old stuff that I posted. Um, so I post all the videos that I post on YouTube. I also post on the free tier on Patreon, plus some bonus extras that come along occasionally. Um, I also have a Fast Graphs 25% off affiliate link down in, the, down in the description if you're interested in giving Fast Graphs a try. They have free trials over there. So if you've never tried it before, you can get 25% uh, off if you use that link. All right. As always, this is not individual investing advice, it's just how I analyze stocks. Um, so Paycom came in by request. So the first thing I always do is look at the historical earnings um, pattern, and this one is pretty good. So these guys do like payroll type stuff. I think, yeah, that's kind of what we have here. Um, under $10 billion company, so relatively small. Uh, for being a member of the S&P 500. Probably this is one that the S&P 500 added during the bubble because uh, they're not very smart over at the S&P 500 and I'm going to make a video about that eventually. But um, so yeah, they were probably added when they were a lot bigger. Currently the stock price is down a lot off the bubble, so over 70%. Um, but if you look at their earnings, they are pretty solid. Um, the 2020 year, obviously, with a lot of people not working, <laughs> um, was a flat year for them, basically. But every other year has had good growth until this year, in which we're also kind of on track for a flat year. Now, normally I want to see enough data, historical earnings data, so I have a recession to go look at. Um, so we don't really have a real recession. We do have the 2020 recession. I don't really count that one because it was so fluky. Um, but we would generally think that this would be at least somewhat economically sensitive since it has to do with like employment. But I mean, if you look at, uh, what's the other one? Pay, mm -hmm, paychecks. I think paychecks is one that I've uh, covered a while before. So if we look at their history, look, they have some economic sensitivity here, two years of declining earnings during the last recession. And then also what, like ADP would be another one that's in the S&P 500. Again, very steady. Um, I think I want to say these guys back buy back like a decent amount of their share, so it helps smooth this out a little bit. But, you know, slightly um, slow growth or slightly negative growth during the recession. Same thing for 2020, but for the most part, slow and steady kind of has been winning the race for those two stocks. And I think they're kind of in the same category, you know, as Paycom. But Paycom's newer, so we don't have a history. But that gives you some... I wouldn't expect these guys to be super cyclical, right? I would... Some economic sensitivity with earnings during downturns. And then... But for the most part, you know, pretty good growth. And these guys have been obviously growing much faster than the the more well-established comp older companies. Um, so why is the stock price crashing? Well, part of it is just because it was a bubble. It traded at um, 130 PE. And when you have fast growth, they had actually great earnings growth the past couple of years until this year. Um, but whenever you have this fast growth slow down and then at the same time you're kind of uh, having multiple compression and a bubble bursting and things like that, you're going to get kind of this downward momentum that can kind of keep pushing things down. So it only trades at like a 20 PE now. Now, of course, if they had flat earnings from now until forever, then, you know, a 20 PE is too much. But it, analysts are expecting teen, low teens earnings growth the next couple years after this year. 
I don't think we really know um, what the future earnings growth is going to be. But my understanding of the situation here is they have this new like AI um, kind of software or update or version of what they do that's really efficient, and they've actually kind of been cannibalizing like their own business, like their own business first. It seems like, and so that is one of the main explanations for their flat earnings this year. Um, and so my thinking on this is that. If that's really the case, and the new kind of AI, I want to say it's called like Betty, or I didn't re review, the, it's been a while since I, I think it's called like Betty or something is like the name of it. Um, but I didn't review it again right before this video, so that might be wrong. But if they, if it's that efficient, right, that they can take their own business, basically, then it might be good enough to take the comp their competitor's business or gather more business over time. So my thinking on this is that now that the stock price is relatively cheap, uh, if they can take market share starting, say, next year or the year after that, wherever this earnings rate bottoms at, maybe it's here, maybe they have another, like a down year. Um, and of course, there could be a recession and economic reasons that earnings could fall. But I, I think there's once we get past, let's call it 18 months, like this year and next year, if they, wherever this earnings settles out at, if from that point they can grow and take market share into the future because they have a better system, then this is going to be a stock that you want to have owned. Now, how to value all that is really difficult. <laughs> so I try to put some numbers to it and we actually uh, bought this one in the Cyclical Investors Club. It looked like our buy price was about $140. So the near-term um, purchase, at least on the closing day of that day, was um, pretty much at the bottom, which was right around in here. And so we've had it a couple months, and it's up maybe like 16 or 17%, and it's outperforming the SP500 and everything. Which is great. We I only took a half a position though for the reasons that, um, and the main reason is I don't really know where this downtrend is going to end, and I don't really know what earnings are going to do the next couple of years. So I I took a part, basically like a half position, and I want to I want momentum. Well, one I want mo basically I want momentum to swing up with the stock price. And for the market to kind of change its mind, like have changed its mind. And as long as, because one thing that can happen is these earnings can still disappoint and that will continue to send the stock lower. And it's really impossible to know how low it could go. So kind of the, the buy, buying initial buy price around that 140-ish level was like a valuation based one, kind of where on things stand now. And then the next one will be um, more of like a momentum play. Assuming valuation doesn't totally collapse. Yeah, the thesis is still that these earnings bottom and recover and then grow a lot long term after that. If it looks like they aren't going to do that, then I still have the I reserve the uh, option to change my mind. But probably the stock won't pick up momentum and rise again until we see evidence that those earnings have bottomed and kind of come out. Unless there's kind of like a false, I mean, it has had these little false breakouts like this one here. Um, but yeah, right now. But actually, if it did that right now, the valuation probably would still be above. Like I want it to be below my valuation and have the momentum. So it would kind of have to like crash out and then start to come back and, and kind of that's where I'm at on it. Um, but it is a really interesting stock. So the way I'm thinking about it is if I do a basic valuation, assume they can grow at 15% off of where they are now, that's pretty close to where the market is. I think the market's like 12% in the next couple of years. Once it bottoms, that uses forward earnings here and assumes 15% growth. That's almost at my 8% level. So if things happen right now, how the market's roughly kind of expecting it to happen, it would be a buy based on valuation, like right around right around here. Like I have one buy 
on based on that at 159 and then one at 148.88 that's based on I kind of used my same recession technique and I based it on this drawdown in November 20 this bottom in November 2023 so I used um like the low price and high and high earnings from that to kind of estimate where would be a good price this, this was I probably built this sometime earlier this year and then started working on it and then that was how I ended up getting it down close to 140 or at least under 150 um so that price if I use that technique is about 148.88 about nine percent lower than where it is now the other ones 159 which is about three percent so they're kind of in the same ballpark they're basically all right around this area the stock trades at 163 right 163.82 right now so the valuation i think if you're reasonably optimistic about the near-term future looks good but if the near-term future is still rocky then it, the stock price could definitely drop more that's really only why i did the half position and then the momentum still sucks it's like D plus basically last time I updated it, which was this Friday, I think. Um, so momentum's still bad, and I would want to see that improve um, and really get positive before I took. And really, probably want some time. The market's going to be pretty volatile through this election season and through this fall, I think. So really, uh, I'd probably be inclined to wait until you know after the election and maybe December and then if th the market started picking up and got optimistic about stuff that's probably more likely where I would be more likely to add um so yeah I think it's it's okay to to nibble at this one a little bit here um with the understanding that we really don't know what the stock price is going to do over the next 18 months especially and I would be prepared if unless it really collapses and like their whole business like just falls apart um i would want to add lower and get the cost basis down somewhere at a reasonable level and then kind of hope that over time that they can start uh growing their business from whatever that level is for the long term um so that those are my thoughts on paycom if you have any questions put them in the comment section uh if you found this useful hit the like and subscribe and i'll see everybody later